What is going on YouTube? Justin Desbeck with Washington Nationals franchise. Figured out show you Sports Center clips in a sense with this one as Matt Lehman is going to follow it off and then the very next pitch, boom, single. But a great effort by the shortstop, just not quick enough. And here comes Kevin Soriano. He is up against Shane Bieber. First pitch is going to be a single over Nolan Arenado, the multi-year Golden Glove winner. You'll love to see it. And then Shane Bieber is going to have to face Kyle Schwarzer, who is now converted to a first baseman. And Schwarzer hits a short bomb of three runs shot to give us a 3 nothing lead. And then we're going to cut to the ninth. 8 nothing. Uh You're probably wondering, well, why did we cut all the way to the ninth? Because Eric Lauer has a no-hitter through eight and a third innings. Of course, the one time I don't actually record like I usually do, it's a no-hitter. Go figure. But regardless, we're going to show the last two outs to see if we do get the actual no-hitter. As there was a grounder to short, and then Kyle Tucker, the top free agent from last year's class, is up. And Lauer has over 100 pitches, and it's going to be another strike. Let's see if Eric Lauer can do the double strikeout. Or the strikeout to win it. And yes, he does. Looking to... Just like that, Eric Lauer throws a no-no. And he's the player of the game. Gilbert also had a home run. And Eric Brown Jr. had an RBI. But we cut to double-A. Where? As we see the box score, that's what's happening. To kind of show you what's going down. Um, it's 4 nothing, top of the second. Chandler, he's going to pop up to end the second. And you're probably wondering, why am I showing double A? I rarely show double A. It's because we have one prospect down there that is interesting. <laughs> and it's because, well, also we have Ernesto down there who we traded for in the offseason. But the real reason why I went and went down there is because third baseman. Ray Roy, excuse me, Shambrowski. He is a loyal, loyal member of the channel. He comments on my videos. He's a great, great guy in the few conversations I had. He wanted a third baseman. I got him a third baseman. I figured I would show him. Plus, he's our, one of our younger third basemen. Because really, third base is up for grabs. And he went three for five with an RBI to get the W. As now we open up our first home opener of season four with Mark Stroman, the free agent signing, as we're going to get Alex, I don't know how to say his last name, so don't quote me on it, with a strike. And then it's going to be to, I, again, I got to learn last names, but that's going to be a grounder. We're rocking the Reds today, the Red Unis. I thought about doing the City Connect, but I, I wasn't going to go gray on gray. But City Connect will definitely be there for sure. Ooh, that is an absolute bomb. Brandon Marsh, and just like that, it's a one nothing lead for the Phillies. We're up against Bailey Falter. As Dwyer's going to hit it down the line, and that's easily going to be two with Dwyer's speed. You'll love to see it. And just like that, it's an R, well, not an RBI, but a double. Now, can Matt Lehman get the job done as that's going to be a ball? Right down the middle, and that's going to be an RBI single for Lehman, and we tie the ball game up right in the first inning. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see from these guys. As, oh, great play by Turner. Great hit, too. That's what I want to see with this young, quote-unquote, big three. Is Dwyer get on, Lehman get on? All that. Like, to me, that is absolutely huge as I try to pick off Layman, or they thought he was going to steal. 
Ooh, that was a terrible swing by me. But we're four and three. They're three and four. Very early on in the season, but right now we are second in the AL East standings. Um, so I can't complain. Again, super young in the season. A lot can happen. As I swing too early, I haven't played this game in about two weeks. Um, and, you know, sometimes when I'm not in the moot groove, I, uh, you know, kind of am not as patient as it's going to be a double play. And just like that, it's a 1-1 ball game, but we tie the ball game up. Now we go and see what he can do. And he gives up a two-run hit, but we have Julius up, Mountcastle, single, Verdugo, double play. All right, let's hop. Let's hop in with Dan Gilbert. He's been hitting the ball really good in this series, and when I'm using him, and he crushes it, but it's going to be a fly out to Marsh. Just like that, the top of the order is back up again. It is 3-1, obviously with the two-run shot. And Dwyer again, but great snag at third. I will, yes, I will actually do pitching as well eventually. I just, I mean, it, Jay Gardner is probably going to be one. Todd Ortiz is going to be another. But, like, when I get good pitching prospects, I will definitely do more uh, player lock games and games with them as well. Or... Say if we have a Cy Young contending pitcher, like I will definitely focus on them more. As it is going to be a grounder to the third baseman. But as of right now, the, the, the top dogs of this franchise are is our hitting, especially with this guy right here. Two time all star, first ever draft pick in this series. He's living up to everything and then some and he gets a single. And the crazy part is, is he's not even 25 yet. He's only 23. You know, Schwarber, we've hit a couple of Schwar bombs with him uh, already in this series. As you saw earlier in the episode, he hit an absolute bomb with the Arizona Car against the uh, not Arizona Cardinals, the St. Louis Cardinals. But that's probably going to be another double play, another one. We go to the top of the fifth. Kind of some sloppy play errors on our part, errors on their part, and just like that, it's still gonna be three one. All right, bottom six, one out. Miles Dwyer is up, and that's gonna be a pretty good hit, but it's gonna be caught out there and left. That was a really good hit ball. I he's so far Dwyer has been at least home runs and RBIs wise our top batter. Um, which has been kind of surprising me as a leadoff guy. And that's going to be a hit up the middle for Matt Lehman as well. As Kevin Soriano is up. I should have waited. As it's a grounder. We'll, uh, we'll look at Luis Urez, a free agent signing. Basically one year deal for third base. Um, because Tyler Whittaker's 50-50, uh, and then we have Phil Watkins as well at third base. We just have a lot of young third base prospects. Um, so, you know, I, and I don't think it's a terrible one-year deal, 11 million type of ordeal. Now Ryan Mountcastle, who we traded last year, but he was on a two-year deal. He's This is the last year of his deal, 8.4 million, I believe. And... Oh, it, is that going to be a single? It is. All right, but great effort by the third baseman, though. Shout out him. That was a great diving stop effort to keep it more than, well, it could probably could more than likely would have been a double. So I, props to him. That's Alex Verdugo. That's a deep fly ball into the gap. See you later. A two-run shot to tie the ball game, and I think he needed that because he's been struggling. I've been struggling with him. And on top of that, Milt Benjamin, the top prospect, besides I would say number one or number two, is right on his heels. I think he needs that confidence there. As we finally get a new pitcher, Christopher Sanchez, as we take ball one. 
Marcus Stroman did leave last inning as well. Uh, Jordan Hicks was in. He he took care of the side. And that's going to be a beautiful hit. Single, up the middle single for Dan Gilbert, who's been kind of playing with a chip on his shoulder with the trade rumors because of uh, Julius Green. 22 years old, a lot younger. Kind of you know, he spent a full year down in Rochester last year. He, he's kind of showing maybe he's the guy. Miles Dwyer hits it, but not good enough. But we do tie the ball game with a Verdugo shot. Let's see what we can do with a Matt Lehman at bat. And that's going to be hit to Trey Turner. That's a routine. I want to say as routine, but with Trey Turner, it is routine. Because he's that good of a good of a guy and Kevin Soriano he's going to take strike one as well oh that's a beautiful shot over the head it's going to get down but that's at least going to be a double for Kevin Soriano and we take a chance on this opportunity with Kyle Schwarber that's going to be a guarded to Trey Turner. Uh, Luis Urias, can he get it done? Fouled off. Probably not the best pitch, but we'll take it. We got him from, the, well, he was originally on the Milwaukee Brewers. And that's going to be a hit. And that's going to be an RBI single as we break this tie. Warming up Iglesias, our closer, potentially. Ryan Mountcastle, that's an absolute nuke, but that's going to retire at the side. So here comes Rasil Iglesias. He is one for one on saves this year. He got the save, I believe, the first episode opening day against the Phillies in Philadelphia. Let's see if he can get the job done. As we face a former national in last season's Austin Meadows. Well, Austin Meadows was on the team last season before we traded him. Didn't really do too much. Was a utility guy. But either way, he is a former national. As he swings and misses one away. Max Muncy's up. The former, I believe, Oakland Athletic. I could be wrong. It's a swing and a miss. Six pitches so far for Inglacius. Another pitch. The great pitch right there. And as you can see, I did get a new controller because I can actually control and get the high stinky cheddar for the second strikeout and the second out. Now Reese McGuire is up. The last hope for the Phillies in this ball game. As it's a grounder to Lehman. Lehman gonna get it. And the Nationals make the comeback and get the W and improve to five and three. So this episode, we're gonna play our lock with someone different. Drew Gilbert, one of our young up and coming. We traded him for him in Houston, from Houston, I believe season one or season two. But he's off to a fast star, 25 years old. And his seat, I don't want to say is hot, but with a young Elijah Green, who, as that's going to be a bloop single, who has, you know, is three years younger, roughly almost the same overall as him, and is a homegrown talent, has his 4 nothing Phillies. You know, you could see why Gilbert's value might not be as good plus you know former first round pick was a he, you know and his contract's going to be up his rookie deal is that's going to be a double play ball for sure so we don't know we don't know what he can do as it's a broken bat the bat goes further than the ball but he's going to get a single I'll take it it's now at six to one. Oh, I just missed that too. 
but with runners on third and second. Just fouled it off again. And the pitch is, we'll take that a ball. Let's see what Drew can do. I know he almost gets hit, but a ball number two. Almost takes it, but we're fighting. Plus, Miles Dwyer is up. And we're going to take the walk with the bases loaded. Almost do come back, but we fall short. Six to five. Miles Dwyer, I believe, did he hit a home run? Did he hit a grand slam? Yeah, I think he hit a grand slam. Good for him. Good for him, but still not enough to get the dub. As we close this episode with scouting, the first look of scouting, I said the three improvements that we need is starting pitching, third base, and center field. But one could argue maybe first base, but definitely I feel like catcher, maybe. But I say center field for now, but I think I'm going to go with closer over center field. No, I'm going to keep center field. So, here's our scouts, and here is what we are going to do. So we have the fifth overall pick, and we look, and David Tan does not seem like he is the batting type. He seems like he's a defensive glove, so he might be off my board. Gil Castro. Very good contact. And very, very good hitting and discipline. I think he's on my board. James Jeffries. Great stand him on strikeouts per nine. 21 years old. His pitching velocity, his break. I think we definitely need to add him on the board. But I also forget that this guy's more of a positional, this first scout. So Juan Rivera, who we will see in the showcase, which I will talk about at the beginning of next episode. Again, for those who don't know, quickly, I have created a showcase where I show off said rookies in the draft right now. It's only 18-year-olds, USA versus international. And I'm not the best with face you know, matching whatnot, so they may not look like them, but I will definitely get at least the base, the jersey, whatnot, and just show. But definitely, Juan Rivera is definitely on our list. He seems like he could be a once in a generation type guy. So sorry, I, I flip flopped. So the first guy was right, but Albert Wells, he also seems like a super super high hit or miss guy and he's 13 but he could potentially be great stanima homers per nine velocity over wells greg mcguan doesn't seem that great brandon seems solid john carlos I would say solid as well. Mike Zimmerman, apparently the Vikings head coach, is now chilling here. But I think we're going to go with Albert Wells. And then the final guy, the position man. So we're going to look at potentially a catcher. Bobby Lynn, maybe? No. Juan Rivera? Possibly. Gil Castro, maybe. Jeffrey Jeffers. He's got vision and contact, that's for sure. What about Sammy Ramirez? Really only power. But maybe C Cesar Doe? 
Really, he's a power guy in speed. Maybe Jim Jenkins? Contact guy. Hmm. I think we're going to have to go with, if I'm guessing right, this guy could be a steal for us. We're going to go with Haito Tanaka. Maybe he could be a steal. So, Tanaka, Wells, and Jeffers are all the guys that we're looking at. So next episode, we will cruise through the next week or so, probably until the 20th. Turn on some game situations and go from there. But if you made it this far in the video, you guys are awesome. Make sure you like the video, and if you're new, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss another one. But until the next episode, you guys have a good one. Peace.